Before we start throwing some pings around our lab to see what's what, let's talk about the ramifications of what we just did. And we took one broadcast domain, we logically segmented the network, and now we have two broadcast domains. And at first that sounds like we'd have more overall broadcasts, but actually the more broadcast domains we have, the smaller they'll be, which limits you the you know what, the scope of the broadcast, and you end up with fewer broadcasts in your network overall. And that's really what it's all about with VLANs, one of the major purposes we create them. And you might not think that sounds like such a big deal in a four host network, and you'd be right, it really isn't. But imagine this on a 64 port switch, which is much more realistic in today's world, or even more ports than that, but we'll go with 64. If a switch is sending out 63 copies of every broadcast and you make you basically logically segment the network in half with a, v, with a VLAN, then you just cut down the number of broadcasts that switch is going to have to send out from 63 to whatever size you make the VLAN. If you make it in half, it would be 32 copies. So that is a huge savings on the switch. It's also a huge savings of bandwidth. It's also a huge savings on the hosts that aren't getting unnecessary broadcasts because they still have to unpack those and then say, oh, wait a minute, I didn't need this. So savings all around, if you will. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and bring the rack back up and we're going to check our connectivity because one thing you want to do after you make a network change, you check your connectivity beforehand and you check it again afterwards. And at the beginning of this lab, every host could ping every host, no problems at all. So I'm going to send a ping to 10.1.1.2 from host 1. And sometimes you might lose that first packet on a ping if it's been a while since you pinged an address. But then the other four go through, and that's definitely not what happened here. So let me send another one just in case. Let's hit the elevator one more button one more time, make it come down faster, right? Well, we are not able to ping 10.1.1.2 any longer, and we could before this lab. So something we did has changed things. Let's do 10.113. Ah, the ping to 10.113 goes right through. No problem at all. Five exclamation points. Let's try 10.114. And that doesn't look good at all. That looks so bad I'm only going to send one set because it's not going to work. So, right now host 1 over in VLAN 1 can ping host 3 but not host 2 and 4. And I know that you're already all over this and you know what's going on. But let's go over to host 2 just in case and send some pings. As we might expect, 2 can't ping 1. And it doesn't look good for 3 either. And let's try 10.114. Okay, we lost that first packet, but the other four go through, and then you're fine. By the way, a very quick aside here, you probably noticed that I terminated that ping after three packets. And you've been looking at the phrase, type escape, <coughs> pardon me, type escape sequence to abort time and time again here. But you notice the, uh, the switch nor the router, by the way, tells you what the escape sequence is. And you need to know this. It is control shift six, one right after the other. One right after the other and then it's going to terminate that ping and you may think well five packet ping i don't i don't mind waiting for it to time out i understand that but as i'll show you much later when we're doing some more advanced labs we're going to use pings to actually simulate data streams or create a stream for us to work with and you might say in an advanced version of ping okay i want 15,000 packets well, if you just started that and you realize, oh, I used the wrong address or, oh, I need to go do something else, blah, 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 you want to stop that ping string. You want to be able to. It's control shift six, control shift six. It is a handy command to know. So what in the world is going on here? Well, our host in VLAN one can ping the other host in VLAN one. We saw that by one being able to ping three. And then we went to host two. Host two can't ping one or three, but can ping four. So I know you've spotted the pattern here that each device can ping the other device in its VLAN but not go across VLANs. Well, here's the thing. A regular layer 2 switch cannot handle traffic going from one VLAN to another. It's not going to be able to process it and it's not going to go through. Traffic to other hosts in the same VLAN, that the switch can do. 
What you've got to do for enter VLAN traffic is to get layer 3 involved somehow. And you're either going to do that with a router or you're going to do it with a multi-layer switch, which is a switch that is capable of IP routing as well as handling everything at layer 2. But right now we're just working with a pure layer 2 switch and that's not going to be able to handle inter VLAN traffic. I really want to show you the one with the router. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I'll give you the name of it now. It's called Router on a Stick. I kid you not. And while it's kind of, I thought, obsolete, it's still around in some places because multi-layer switches can do it much more efficiently, uh, handle inter VLAN traffic, that is. But we've got to wait until we do some routing stuff before we get to that because that config is pretty, it's kind of advanced. And we're, we'll be ready for it then, but we're not ready for it now. But right now, just keep in mind, because we're going to come back to this very same setup. And we're going to bring a router into the picture. We're going to configure a router on a stick. Uh, but we're not going to do it right now. Right now, I just want you to know that for inter VLAN traffic on a layer 2 switch, you've got to get the routing layer involved somehow. And you're either going to do that with a router, or you're going to do it with a multi-layer switch. That is it for our VLAN lab here. What we're going to do when we come back is uh, just a couple little things with VLANs I want to show you, including how to name one. And also, I believe I mentioned initializing a switch. This is obviously not something you do very often at work. At least I hope not, because you're probably not going to have that job very long if you do. What we're going to do after I show you one or two little things with VLANs is actually show you how to totally initialize a Cisco switch because a lot of people think they know but there are actually two commands and a lot of people leave the second one out then we'll, I'll actually bring you back after it boots up you can see how what that looks like it's stuff that you only get to see in books you don't get to see live very often if at all but you will see it live coming up next <laughs> 